in vitro transcription is a simple procedure that is used for the synthesis of RNA molecule by using the DNA template. The RNA molecule is synthesized from DNA template in microgram to milligram quantities. So in vitro transcription involves cell-free system. That means that the in vitro transcription reaction is carried out in a tube such as Ebendrop tube. So what is the process involved in in vitro transcription? In in vitro transcription, the, the sequence of interest is first cloned into the backbone plasmid such as T7 mRNA backbone plasmid. The first step is the cloning of ORF into backbone plasmid, so into backbone plasmid such as T7 mRNA backbone plasmid. This is the first step in in vitro transcription process. After the sequence of interest has been cloned into the backbone plasmid, this plasmid is linearized by using suitable restriction enzyme. Okay, so then we get linearized plasmid. This linearized plasmid is linearized plasmid is purified, and this linearized plasmid is used as a template for the in vitro transcription reaction. Then what is done? Then this linearized plasmid is subjected to in vitro transcription by using the enzyme such as T7 RNA polymerase. Okay, such as T7. RNA polymerase, T7 RNA polymerase, then what we get, we get RNA transcripts. After in vitro transcription reaction, we get RNA transcripts. These RNA transcripts, structure wise, they consist of 5' cap, 5' UTR, coding sequence, 3' UTR, and 3' polyatl. Some of the components of this mRNA molecule can be incorporated in the M, this backbone plasmid, T7 mRNA backbone plasmid, whereas some components can be added post-transcriptionally or co-transcriptionally. For example, we can clone 5' UTR and 3' UTR triggered with the coding sequence in the T7 mRNA backbone plasmid. We can insert 3' polyatel as a poly T sequence in the plasmid backbone or we can also incorporate 3' polyatel sequence post-transcriptionally. This 5' cap can be incorporated after the transcription process. So uh, the mRNA molecule or the RNA transcripts synthesized from in vitro transcription reaction, they have several limitations. One of the major limitations is the immune response. Other limitation is the low stability of artificial transcripts. Another limitation is ins insufficient protein output rates from these transcripts and the another limitation is decreased protein half-life. So to overcome these drawbacks, the each and every component of this mRNA molecule can be optimized. So how can we optimize the mRNA, IBT mRNA? So for the optimization of, let's say that a five prime cap, we can use anti-reverse cap analog, beta SARCA or S analog or clean cap technology. For the optimization of 5' prime and 3' prime UTRs, so we can use UTRs of highly expressed genes such as uh, alpha and beta globulins that have greater half-life. We can also remove microRNA inhibitory sites from 3' prime UTR and 5' prime UTR using rational engineering. We can also use computational algorithms to generate synthetic 5' prime and 3' prime UTRs. For the optimization of coding sequence, we can replace natural adenosine with N1-methyl adenosine or N6-methyl adenosine. We can substitute cytidine with 5-methyl cytidine. Similarly, we can substitute natural uridine with 5-methyluridine or 2-thiouridine or 5-methoxyuridine or pseudouridine or N1-methyl pseudouridine. Finally, for the optimization of 3' polyatel, at the tail length of 120 adenos adenosines is considered optimal, and at least 30 to 40 adenosines have been deemed required to constrain both 5' to 3' and 3' to 5' mRNA-DK pathways.